Bonjour, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session. And in this, this session, we are going to uh, talk about the SINCEF Kamada project. And uh, uh, I'm Hong Kai from Huawei, and this uh, uh, Xiao from Dog Cloud. We are Kamada uh, maintainers. Actually, we, uh, we have another speaker, but she didn't make it this time. So, in this session, uh, uh, since we are, uh, this is our first time present in the Europe, uh, so we are going to talk about the background, background of this project and uh, uh, the general concept of, of Kamada and the core features and also the Kamada community. So let's get started. Sure. Hello everyone. It's a great honor to hear um, share Kamanda in Paris, the, the roles and the art of city. This is our agenda. So let's begin. Uh, why we need multi cluster? Okay. okay. Uh, from the 2023 flexure report, more than 87 of users are uh, adopting the multi cloud strategies, including hybrid, public cloud, and the uh, private cloud. As, as cloud native technology materials and the era of programmable multi cloud cloud management service is coming. Just as the Roma was not built in a day, the development of cloud native multi-cloud is not achieved over one night. We are going through different stages and they facing different challenges. In the beginning, no service interactive, isolated data and resource and the traffic, just an isolated island. As cluster increase, management costs rise, driving demand unified for delivery, access, and occur structure and scheduling. We are called this stage Venice Water City. Here we are. With AI becomes popular in the Kubernetes Europe, as we all know. As we learn, Kubernetes infrastructure is increasing. There are more and more large scale cluster. The final stage ways maybe automatic scheduling, flexible scaling, and the free migration. We call this stage Garden State Age of Sale. The future is here, so we need to catch this. Of course, there are many ch challenges in managing cloud, multi cloud container clusters, such as numer numerous clusters, scattered service, and restriction clusters. Of course, the window locking is also we should care about. The Kubernetes community has never exploring multi-cloud uh, solutions. In 2025, in 2015, the Federation SEG, SEG was established. There is no white paper. Federation V1 started in 2016, becoming Kubernetes sub-project in 2017. Due to limitation, like Federation information in Baron did in annotation of Kubernetes resource, which has a poor usability and has low independent version controller. Federation V2 embarrassed in 2018, and the 2020 multi cluster released a top service APIs. In 2021, Commander was open sourced. It's developed in continuation of Kubernetes Federation V1 and V2. Some basic concepts are inherited from these two versions. So this is the reason why people say Kamanda is Federation V3. Next, we will share in Kamanda design principles, architecture, and the core features in detail. So what is Kamanda? The Kubernetes Amanda. Oh, you know. Kamanda is designed to freely scalable 
container resource pools enabling and the user to multi cloud as if using a single Kubernetes cluster. U users can use the application from a single cluster to multi cluster without any refactoring. And the two chains previously used in Kubernetes without any rules. This is our most important design principles. Then, Commander will give out of the box ability and the capabilities and many built-in multi-cluster scenarios such as the active, active, and cross-region, and the disaster remote, and so on. Also, Commander will support free migration between multi-cloud vendors and uh, oriented the Kubernetes native API, thereby achieve no vendor locking and the centralized management. As the last, Commander have the built-in scheduling policies based on in in industry scenarios. So, Okay, let's get a start overview of Commander. Commander also have the uh, counter plan deploy, deployed on Kubernetes cluster, uh, which have um, Commander API server and, and the scheduler and the counter manager, just like the Kubernetes with this, co with this components cooperation. Users can create resource and uh, complete the orchestration a multi-cluster application through the native Kubernetes API, just we said first. At the same time, some clusters has limited network access. Commander supports push mode and deployed, deployed uh, commander agent in corresponding clusters. Based on this architecture, Commander also uh, support many features, just like the cross-cluster application failover, multi-cluster service discovery, and so on, which we will share in detail later. Before deeply learn more about Commander, let's first understand the core concept of Commander. We need focus on this rich resource, resource tablet, just Kubernetes native resource uh, deployment demo set and the any other native resource and the propagation policy, the widely applicable policy for multi-cluster application scheduling, configure which cluster the, the application should be propagated to. And the overall policy, different uh, cluster has the different configur configurations, just like the uh, image URL and the other uh, configurations will also support it, support it. At, at the same time, resource bonding and uh, the work are internal resource of the commander and the users don't, do not pay attention to them. Now, let's look at the workflow of commander. Uh, let's start with the magic jewelry from uh, deployment of NGX. Let's go. We have a Kubernetes um, native resource, um, just NGX deployment. At the same time, we can declare a propagate policy to associate this deployment through label selector, their order doesn't the matter. The commander scheduler will select the most appreciated cluster for the application based on propagated policy, create a resource bounding, and complete the assessment, the resource, and the cluster. And at and the, the same time, uh, in actual scenarios, deployment have different configuration in different clusters, just like the image URL. So there, therefore, commander defends an override policy to handle this situation. Uh, the finally, commander control, controller will create a Kubernetes native application in the real cluster, bounded by deployment 
completing the entire workflow. The, the creation order of propagation policy and uh, the Kubernetes native resource is not related and depends on the user's true uh, practice. Why is that the cluster administrator manage and plan the scheduling uh, strategies of the application in advance, such as which the cluster to scheduling and what's the strategies. At the same time, I will create a propagation propagate policy in advance. In this example, uh, the administrator wants NGX deployment to automatically deploy to three clusters besides uh, distributed in two drones to, to achieve the uh, application high ability. Deploy, deployers can just focus on the de deployments Kubernetes native application as they normally would using the uh, existing tools just like Kubernetes and they can go they don't, they don't need worrying about whether it's a multi-cluster or a single cluster. So let's learn more about the propagation policy. The propagation policy associated Kubernetes native resource or the user say, customer resource um, through the label selector. And uh, at the same time, propagation policy provides rich multi cluster scheduling policies, just like the cluster affinity and the cluster tolerations and the uh, dynamic weights and so on. Commander also support the different override settings, just like the plan test, image override, and the commander override, uh, just as the PC, uh, we, we support configure uh, different configuration in different uh, clusters. And the last resource is uh, the commander cluster. Describes the cluster management by commander. Uh, the cluster support pull and push uh, network, um, network mode uh, depends on the user uh, practice. The secret reference is used to include uh, uh, certifications to commander connect the uh, clusters as well as the other configurations. So, by law, we should uh, have a basic uh, idea of what commander is all about. Next, welcome to Hong Cai to share with the core concepts of commander. This is the most important fascinating Thank you. part. Thank you, Xiao. <coughs> Uh, okay. Uh, Kamana and uh, aims to provide the uh, tinkery automation for multi-cluster application management in multi-cloud and uh, hybrid cloud scenarios. Uh, the key features are including uh, uh, cluster management and uh, uh, cross-cluster scheduling and. Uh, uh, multi-cluster service and so on. And I will, I will give a general introduction uh, for these features. Uh, first feature is uh, since Kamala uh, uh, gonna to manage application across clusters. So the first feature is uh, uh, how Kamala manage uh, member cluster. So uh, it, it's, it's pretty painful for people to uh, manage uh, so many people and uh, so, so many cluster and uh, do uh, a lot of uh, repeat uh, operations on that. So um, Kamala can control the cluster of uh, various cl cloud service such as uh, uh, GKE and uh, AKS, uh, even pro private clusters. <coughs> Additionally, uh, Kamada can offer uh, different reg registry modes, uh, that's a uh, push and pull to uh, meet the network situations. The push modes uh, involves direct 
communication from Kamada to the memory cluster, and uh, uh, the pool mode uh, delegates the management to uh, a component named the Kamada agent. Uh, to uh, the 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 command agent usually deployed in the memory cluster. So, um, uh, since uh, command accepts the Kubernetes API, so it's uh, uh, it's pretty easy for people to migrate the uh, ecosystem to to multi cluster. Um, with with the proprietary policy. Uh, people can describe their scheduling rules on the in it, and uh, Kamala Scheduler will to uh, will uh, distribute your application across cluster based on the rule user de de described in the programming policy. Uh, additionally, as the resource manifests may vary different in memory clusters, so Kamala also provides the override policy to implement, uh, implement the different uh, configurations, including uh, image registry and uh, different labels, different uh, arcs. So you can, you can use the propagating policy to uh, replicate an application to multi clusters, or you can divide an application to uh, multiple cluster. Uh, Kamada man manages multiple memory cluster. Uh, in the event that uh, uh, one cluster goes down, uh, Kamada can gracefully migrate your application from uh, one cluster to another, uh, ensuring that the, your business uh, remains available and uh, uninterrupted. Additionally, if you want to uh, proactively make rid the workload from a cluster, uh, you can uh, such as tend a cluster and trigger the migration. Okay, um, besides, uh, besides our cluster failures, uh, an application can potentially fail. Uh, in, in such case, Kamala can automatically uh, migrate the faulty application to another uh, another cluster. Uh, user can control the migration logic. Uh, user can control the migration process, uh, including define define uh, define application failures and uh, specify specifying the migration behavior. Um, Kamala use uh, the proxy uh, proxy request to access the memory cluster uh, and uh, provides a unified aggregated API server to uh, enable unified authentication and uh, across uh, cross cluster ONM. With this feature, you don't need to switch your you don't need to switch your config don't need to switch your config fair to access the memory cluster. All you need is the Kamada's config file. Um, another feature is that Kamada can cache uh, caches all memory cluster results by uh, supporting third-party uh, third store and uh, even uh, local storage and provide a unified query you can query all memory cluster results in a, a unified manner and a efficient, efficient manner, uh, greatly, uh, greatly reducing the access pressure, uh, pressure on memory cluster. Kamada can take open, open search or elected search at the third party storage. So, with the power of uh, uh, elected search, you can build a a uh, wonderful resource dashboard uh, across multi cluster. Um, there are many reasons, reasons why a uh, uh, Kubernetes user want to split their, uh, their deployments uh, across multi cluster, but still uh, remain 
material dependencies between workloads uh, running in those clusters. Uh, the Kubernetes cluster is a hard boundary. Uh, a deployment cannot access a service from another cluster. Uh, the, com the command and multi cloud service, which extend the service uh, concept across uh, across multi clusters. A uh, service can be consumed from uh, can be cons uh, can be consumed everywhere as long as the cluster is managed by Kamada. For example, a client. A uh, client in cluster two can, can consume uh, a, a service in cluster one, even there is no service backend in the uh, cluster two. Okay, the that's the uh, command call features, and uh, that's uh, next one. I will going to uh, talk about the command community. Uh, Kamala was uh, open source at 2021 and uh, uh, accepted by CINCEF as a sandbox project in also in 2021. And uh, we uh, just uh, moved the levels to incubation at the last year. And uh, Kamala uh, joined the efforts uh, more than 500 contributors and uh, build a fast growing community. For now, uh, there are 20, uh, about 30 public adopters uh, using Kamada um, in their production environment. And uh, there are six, uh, six vendors uh, uh, su successfully leverage the uh, Kamada to build uh, their service. Uh, on, on public cloud or private cloud. One of the capabilities of a Kamada is uh, that it accepts uh, Kubernetes API, which follows Kamada, which allows Kamada to easily integrate with the uh, tools from the Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, the community has tested AgoCD, uh, Flux, Kaveno, and so on. They uh, all work well with Kamala. Here is the uh, public adopter, adopters. Uh, now we have uh, about 30 adopters. Uh, adopters. Mm. Uh, Kamala community builds the connection with, uh, with them and uh, listen to their voice uh, and uh, provide support when they need. And uh, they also contribute back to the uh, community. Uh, that's the way the community works. Kamala community is always looking forward to hear uh, feedback from uh, users. So if you want to use Kamala, please feel free to talk, out, talk to us. Yeah, every year the community will refresh the roadmap, but uh, uh, what's to note that the, these items might be subject to change over time and depend on how many feedback we get. Basically, we uh, will focus on uh, support, provide support for AI training area and uh, building a multi-cloud workflow. And welcome to uh, talk with, with us. Uh, about any feature you want to have, uh, we are always glad to help. So welcome to uh, uh, ask uh, ask uh, ask uh, questions, and um, you can find us from the GitHub issue, Slack, and so on. So that's all of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, we are still have some time. So uh, I'm gonna have uh, one or two questions. Okay. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. 
is it only for stateless applications or stateful application as well? And if it is, how do you handle volumes, migrations? Uh, your question is uh, how to manage the stateful application, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, for now, uh, Kamala can um, can schedule all kinds of applications across uh, multiple cluster. But uh, but uh, on uh, but for now, for the migration across cluster, there's a problem with the uh, stateful application because. Um, you have to migrate the application, and the problem is you have to migrate the, 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 the data. Yeah, that's the problem we are working on it. Okay, thank you. Hi, thank you for the presentation. And how granular is control over objects? So let's say we have a core DNS, and one of the, I don't know, 50 clusters has some issues. And uh, the configurations are stored in config map, for example. Could we, for example, pause a propagation to one specific cluster for one specific object in kubefed is just disabling by label, and then our administrators are, I don't know, changing the configs to see what is happening and why we have an issue for this one specific cluster, or do we have to disable it, I don't know, for by label or for the whole AZ, or can we just pause for this specific cluster and specific object? Thank uh, you. Uh, hello. You, you mean uh, propagate application by label selector uh, to 15 clusters and uh, what's the problem? Uh, yeah, so we have a issue with one cluster yeah. and it's a core DNS that gets config from config map. Yeah. And we want to pause a propagation for that specific config map. So for example, for two weeks, that cluster this one object is not synchronized with our general deployments and changes that we are pushing to the project. Uh -huh. Is it possible in Karmada? Uh, yeah, Karmada, the propagation policy can handle, handle the situation. If cluster is, 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 is down, you mean? Cluster is not down, but we just want to experiment with configurations for this specific cluster. Uh, you mean the cluster configuration already changed? The uh, commander can over can refresh the cluster in sub sub cluster. Yeah, yeah. So it does not. It's automatic. Uh, no, it does not change that specific cluster, that specific object in that specific cluster. Uh, yeah, that's a question. If it's a specific override policy, or can I just? Are they able to one object and Karmada will not synchronize all the changes to it? We, we, we can talk it up further after the session. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, another question? Okay, sure. Uh, how does Karmada support uh, propagating HPA and KIDA auto scaling configurations? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, Kamada can uh, manage uh, the Kubernetes HPA resources, um, but we still have uh, advanced uh, HPA that name is the federated HPA. There, the HPA will work on the Kamada control plan, and uh, it can scale the workload across cluster. That is the uh, uh, future, I think. Okay. So and do you support Kida? Okay, that, uh, we don't have uh, in, uh, integration with them, but we'll do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the for the time, we can talk about talk talk about it after the session. Okay. Huh? Okay. 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 Um, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, my question will be related with um, cross cross cluster failover and the migration. So the service will remain. Uh, live and until the migration is happening. For example, one pod goes down and then this pod appears in another cluster. Mm -hmm. um, so the service will remain uh, seamless, like there will be kind of like a live migration or? Uh, I'm sorry, the, the service will what? Will be ri live at that time. So for example, if a application- it Remain live, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. is it similar to live migration or how does this work? Uh, yes, uh, uh, service might, uh, uh, in, for, uh, 
for example, uh, application might have uh, several uh, replicas. I know some of them will be uh, uh, done. So they, in this case, Kamada might be migrate the application. But uh, during the migration process, the uh, the, the rest uh, replicas will be alive. And uh, after the application totally launched in another cluster, the application will, uh, the previous uh, replica will be destroyed. Um, okay, so in case if the service is available in only one cluster mm -hmm. and the service goes down, so if the migration happens, so it will start from the same place? No, no, I, I think uh, if the security rules dis describe that the service only can uh, live in one cluster, so the the class of error will not happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. I have uh, one question related to the authentication flow which you have shown in the presentation. Uh, you said that uh, currently the problem is that you have to authenticate to the each cluster, etc. And with the Karmada uh, control plane, you can use that to authenticate to the multiple cluster. So, question for me from my side is that. Uh, is it possible to ha uh, to manage the permissions for the different clusters to the different users? So for an example, if we are building a platform and we want to provide that platform and use the Karmada to use that for doing the authentication and authorization to the individual cluster to specific members. So is it possible with that that we put this Karmada on top of the platform and then this is working in a way that Okay, you belong to tenant A and you have access to cluster A and B, and you belong to tenant B and you have access to cluster C and D, etc. So, is this possible that, uh, there or not? Uh, actually, uh, it's a good question. Uh, many users have different permissions in different cluster. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, the command uh, open source project has. Um, so has not support this situation. Okay. Yeah. Maybe uh, you you can seek the command vendors. Mm -hmm. the, the enterprise product maybe um, covers the uh, the permission and the authorization or authentication to handle the permission difference uh, okay. with different cluster, different users. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Very okay. So we'll let him go once. Okay. Uh, very good presentation. Is there any limitation with the maximum latency that Karmada support to the clusters, or the maximum number of clusters that, that Karmada can manage? Uh, you. You mean uh, the Karmada uh, can manage how many clusters? Yeah, the maximum uh, number of clusters that can manage. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, we uh, come out of the community uh, have run a test at uh, uh, 2022. I, I remember, yeah, uh, we have run against the uh, uh, 100 uh, huge cluster, 100 cluster. Um, but um, I think that uh, we we didn't run more clusters because we have a limit of the test results. Uh, but we have a uh, feedback from our users, they are using Kamada to manage the more than 100 cluster. Yeah, that's totally a uh, big cluster, you know, uh, but uh, more than 2,000 nodes in, in, one, uh, cluster, in one cluster, okay? Uh, I think uh, you can uh, find the test report on the Kamada website. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Well. Bonjour, bonjour.